All right, so we're on our way to the Arizona State Fair and I'm shooting this with the Olympus OMD EM5 Mark III. Hey guys, I'm back again, and today I want to talk a little bit more about the Olympus EM5 Mark III. If you didn't see my review video I posted last week, I'll link to it in the description below. But I want to talk more about this camera right here as a vlogging tool or a video tool. Now, a video tool for the casual video shooter, not for the professional video shooter. Professionals uh, will go for cameras like the Panasonic S1H, the Sony's, Panasonic GH5's professionals use. And I'm talking in the realm of mirrorless cameras. Of course, there's much higher end cameras that professionals use, like the cinema cameras from Canon, from Sony, from Panasonic. I film my videos here in this room on a Canon C100 Mark II. It's an oldie, but a goodie. 4K sensor and it down samples to 1080 and that's all I need right here. But on the go, I experiment with cameras like GoPro. The GoPro 7 has gotten much use. The Osmo Pocket, the Osmo Action because they're small and they're tiny and they're easy and the quality output is good enough for the casual user. But what about if you're a casual user and you shoot family, vacations, personal projects, uh, or you're just an enthusiast and you love photography and you're getting into video. Will the Olympus EM5 Mark III be a good choice? I have the 12 millimeter F2 lens on this body. And as you can see, it's so small and so compact that it's light. And I have this tripod handle on so I could basically walk around if I want to vlog and I can use this. And the Olympus is now good enough with its face detection and eye detection that it keeps your face in focus. And you also have this cool thing called a flip out LCD. So again, if I'm talking to the camera, I can do so with ease. I can make sure I'm in focus and everything is framed right with the Olympus EM5 Mark III. Now in the past, I've tried Olympus cameras for this, but the AF was not good enough. And I'm not talking about the EM1X because the EM1X is way too big for that kind of use. So if you're a casual user, how will this do against something like an iPhone 11 Pro, something like a Sony a7 III? I was curious myself if this new Olympus would be able to keep up in the video department. So Debbie and I went to the state fair yesterday here in Arizona. Now we go to the state fair every year and we take our photo in a photo booth and we've been doing this for uh, the last eight years, this will be the ninth year. So we now have nine photo booth photos from the past nine years and we've been together nine years. So we're kind of documenting it every year at the state fair. Next year when we have 10, I'm going to frame them and it's gonna have 10 years of photo booth pictures uh, from our fair trips. It's just memories, photography to me, photographs to me are as close as we can get to a time machine. I've said this before. We can go back and look at these images years later and look at how young we looked, how happy we were, if we're still happy today, if there's a year that, you know, we can look back at these memories with joy, with sometimes tears, with a smile, and I think it's a magical thing. But we were at the fair and I decided to shoot some video with the EM5 Mark III and the 12 millimeter F2. Now all these were shot in 1080. I'm still not a 4K guy, I don't see the point. Sure, you get a little more clarity and snap, but for YouTube, I feel 1080 is just fine. So for the casual user, you're gonna shoot 1080 as well. Casual users are not gonna worry about 10-bit 422 and all of that stuff. So if you're a casual user, this video's for you. It's not for those looking for professional scientific comparisons. Let's take a look and we'll talk a little bit more. All right, here is the EM5 Mark III. You can see the five axis in action. Here's the Sony a7 III, a lot more shaky. I was walking exactly the same way. And here's the iPhone 11 Pro. The color is a little exaggerated here, but it's pretty smooth. EM5 III once again, 
Um, this is with the 12 millimeter f2, which is a great lens for this camera. Small, light, compact, um, and an f2 aperture. Here's the a7 III with the 28 millimeter f2 lens, which is also a decent lens. Here is the iPhone 11 Pro. Again, you see that pop of color. You're getting great exposure right out of the camera. EM53, look at the five axis. I'm walking to the side in no special way whatsoever. You see a natural color. I am in the natural profile. Sony a7 III, same thing, a little more shaky. Uh, I am also in a neutral profile. And the iPhone 11 Pro, look at that color snap. A little bit too saturated. And the smoothness is in between the Sony and Olympus. EM53 here, natural color. Um, again, the five axis doing pretty well. The a7 III, a little more natural looking here. iPhone is crisp, colorful, smooth. Um, some may prefer this. So we're at the Arizona State Fair. And I'm using right now the Olympus EM5 Mark III and I am finding it to be a fantastic vlogging style camera. The autofocus is now pretty solid and sticks on to the face because it has face detection, eye detection, and while the eye detection is not as, I'd say, quick and snappy as something like on a Sony, it still works. So I'm gonna be doing a little bit of comparison here with the Sony a7 III uh, and even the iPhone 11 Pro Max. The sun was very bright. I didn't have ND filters. So this is what you see is what you get. Now I'm going to pull out the Sony and 28 millimeter F2 and see how that looks. Now I'm shooting on the Sony a7 III. I have the 28 millimeter F2 lens. It's very loud around here. So hopefully you can hear me. I'm using the Rode Wireless Go mic. Sony has a lot more camera shake. The five axis is not as effective. You see more shallow depth of field, but in this case, I don't think that is desirable. I prefer the Olympus here. All right, here we are with the iPhone, but uh, still at the fair. The phone was doing a great job. It almost appears HDR. There's no blown highlights. The shadows are there. Everything is not crushed, and it looks very smooth because the image stabilization in the phone is superb. The only thing with the phone is you're not going to get that depth, right? You're not going to get a shallow depth of field effect using video on the iPhone. They mimic that and simulate it in photo mode, in portrait mode, but for video, you cannot have that effect. So the iPhone video, while crisp, sharp, colorful, and full of dynamic range, is always going to look a little flatter than something from, say, a Sony a7 III or even the Olympus because the lenses we use on these cameras allow us to create a shallow depth of field if that is what we want. Also notice the Sony a7 III 5-axis is far behind the Olympus and, in my opinion, even the phone. I've always said this for years about Sony cameras. Their 5-axis with video is not very effective. You still get shakes. Um, it's not smooth like the Olympus. And speaking of the Olympus, it is smooth as butter. It has the best five axis that I've ever witnessed or experienced in a camera when it comes to smooth video footage. It's almost gimbal-like, but I'd rather use this than have it on a gimbal. Again, we're talking casual use, not professional. We're not making films here. So I would not want this on a gimbal. It's heavy, it's big, they drift. It's a pain in the butt. So we are getting closer in actual physical mirrorless cameras to having that gimbal-like performance. Now cameras like the GoPro 8, the Osmo Action, they already give us gimbal-like performance. But again, their little cameras, their quality is not the best in lower light. So there's pros and cons to each. The pros and cons, Olympus, your con is in lower light, you're going to get more grain. It's gonna look a little more mushy if you add noise reduction. You're not going to get the low light performance from micro four thirds because of the smaller sensor. Same with uh, GoPros and Osmos and all of that. In low light, they will suffer. The Sony a7 III is not going to give you the five axis, anything close to what the Olympus gives, but you're going to get more depth, right? As you see in this clip with Debbie. It looks more cinematic because of that depth and it looks less digital. It looks more film-like, but you're losing that five axis and you're losing really 
the punchy colors that you're getting from the phone in the Olympus, but some might prefer that. But as a casual user, you probably don't prefer that because a casual user is going to want nice color and pop out of the camera. In that case, you get that from the Olympus and you get that from the phone, the Sony is going to be a little duller. Now you can put the Sony on a vivid mode, but that's gonna mess with your contrast. Uh, Color-wise, I do prefer the Olympus above all three cameras. Depth-wise, low light, the Sony a7 III wins. And if you just want a no fuss image right out of the camera that's going to look great, the iPhone takes the prize. In this case, I would probably pick the Olympus as my vlogging camera. Yes, I said it. I would pick the Olympus EM5 Mark III as my vlogging camera from these choices. Now, I'm not saying out of everything available, but with these choices, I would pick it over a GoPro, an Osmo action type of camera, an Osmo pocket. I would pick it over the Sony for the reasons mentioned and the phone because it's just not that much fun using a phone. I like a physical camera with physical controls. Many of you do as well. So there you go. That was just my opinion on these three cameras, a just for fun comparison. Uh, if you enjoy these videos, thumbs up and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.